Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Viking Conquest. Now, when we left off, we were participating in the Assembly and attempting to clear our name, and indeed, clear the name of King Horik as well, if at all possible. Now, as we see here, we have Reginard the Traitor, or maybe not the traitor, who knows? Well, he did somewhat betray us at the moment, so <laughs> I suppose we could call him that. And now we have... My quarrel is not with you, Egil. Theodord was like a brother to me, and Borgar lied to me in order to take him and kill him. I won Borgar's trust and promised that one day I would avenge Theodord's death, and that day has come. I just want to be happy, have a farm, wife, and children, but Borgar brings only misfortune wherever he goes. I need to feel protected, and Sigurd has promised me everything that I wish for. Oh my. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. Ooh. Oh, okay. I think we might go for the melancholic one. Usually, I like to go with the ones that have the brackets around them, because that indicates that we have the skill, and indeed it's a unique option to go for it. So, I think we'll go with that. Maybe. Okay, yeah, I think so. Oh! Oh! Oh, we actually improved our relation with Reginald by five. That's very nice. I, I'm sorry. I do what I have to do. King Horik, Sigurd has made very serious allegations, supported by a witness. What do you say in your defense? King Horik clears his throat. <clears throat> I do not know this man named Reginald. I suspect he is a liar, bought by Sigurd, as he seems to have some sort of dispute with Borgar. At any rate, his testimony is not against me, but against Borgar, since he in no way has mentioned me or shown that I have helped Borgar in any misdeeds. If this is all that Sigurd has against me, I ask this assembly for compensation for the insult to my honor. For a few seconds, Sigurd loses composure. The gods know that you are eliminating my evidence and witnesses when you sent your dog after Atli and Ulf. But this man was with Borgar and saw everything, and he can testify that you were involved. Oh, and then we have more options. I like this, I like this. Okay. I say Reginald is a liar, blinded by hatred? Ooh, oh my goodness. First of all, Reginald's first master was Theodor, not the Jarl of Kenema. That might be good, because it is, again, thanks to our higher persuasion. Yeah, okay, we'll go with the persuasion. Okay, so that's obviously made... <laughs> it's made our situation better, but of course it has, yeah, lowered our relation with Reginard rather considerably. And now we say, Reginard betrayed his first master, Theodord, as now he betrays me. Would any man keep a known enemy in his herd? This man has just demonstrated that he cannot be trusted. Now this is a very delicate matter that may affect the stability of the kingdom. The judges shall retire to deliberate for a moment. You watch as the judges get behind the big rock before entering a heated discussion. All around you, everyone engages in energetic conversations. Some Jarls supporting King Horek, others Jarl Sigurd. This assembly may either be the solution to civil war or the trigger to start one. Everything depends on the judge's decision. You realize that no one approaches you. Everyone avoids you like the plague. You are aware also that nobody gave you the opportunity to present the case of the abduction of your mother. You feel you have not been more than a piece in a game of Neftauf between the powerful men of Denmark. I do believe that is similar to chess, perhaps? I have no idea, but that's what I can relate it to. So let us continue on. The judges are slow to come to a decision. You're not sure how much time has passed, but it seems it takes them very, very long. Many men around you have decided to sit on the ground, and there are even merchants distributing food and mead. Reginard remains in the same spot, silent and without moving a muscle, as if carved in granite. Egil doesn't look at you either. He is among the men around King Horik, advising and encouraging him. Finally, the judges return from behind the large rock. Okay, so... May our judgment reach your ears, and may those who do not comply with it be punished by hell. We have decided the following. 
In the case of the death of Olvia, this assembly rules that... Oh. Rules that Borgar acted in self-defense and declares him innocent. Excellent. And Sven says, What? This is not justice. This assembly disrespects the grave of my brother. Yes. <laughs> disrespects, okay. And, oh yes, Sigurd pushes Sven back and takes the floor. And he also says, Sven Bulnek accepts the decision of the assembly. Well, the assembly has spoken. Before gods and men, this quarrel has ended between these two men. There we are. May they punish any who do not fulfill their oaths. Excellent. <laughs> and now, oh dear. By the options, I have a sneaking suspicion of what's going to happen here. Regarding the case of the witness called Reginard, who has been accused of lying, the gods must decide his culpability. As the accusation is grave, this assembly has decided that Borgar and Reginard will engage in a home gang. A duel to the death on the island called Short within six days. Two will go, but only one will return. If one of them fails to show up, he will be declared a coward, less than a man. And this will be told by scolds and messengers to all men in Denmark and abroad. I accept the decision of the assembly. I think that's the only thing we can do, really. I accept the decision of the assembly, too. I'm no liar, but I regret having been a traitor. I am very sorry, Borgar. Oh, now it makes me feel even worse. Oh, dear. Well, maybe he should have changed his mind at the last minute, perhaps, and then everything would have been okay, but yeah. Well, when this assembly is over, the important men of Denmark will come get you and take you to Short Island to face your opponent. There we are. This assembly has also decided on a last major issue. The accusations and insults between King Horek and Jarl Sigurd can cause serious damage to Denmark. So this assembly of freemen which is above Jarls and Kings and answers only to the gods, has decided that a reconciliation between the two must occur. King Horik will give Sigurd a position on his council and among his most beloved men. Moreover, King Horik will pay a war guild of 15,000 pennies in compensation for all the efforts made by Sigurd in organizing the expedition. In return, Jarl Sigurd shall remain by King Horik, advising him and not leaving Denmark. Therefore, Sigurd must relinquish control over the fleet that shall relieve his brethren. This fleet will be led by two other men, Sven on the part of Sigurd and Harald Haraldsson on the part of King Horik. The fleet will depart for England in a few days without further delay. It is furthermore our decision that Borg, oh my, that Borgar shall join as advisor of Harold Harrison as long as the gods give him the victory in the duel. Otherwise, Ejol takes Borgar Beartilt's place and herd. One or the other should meet with me in the Mead Hall of Reeb once the home gang is over. Another judge takes the floor. He shifts his gaze from one party to the next until his eyes rest on you. The assembly representing the gods and freemen of Denmark has spoken. These are the two parties, right? King Horek, Jarl Sigurd? I accept the judgment of the assembly. I will fulfill my part as has been decreed. I swear that I will uphold and enforce it. King Horek quickly accepts more control over the actions of Jarl Sigurd. Sigurd shows no sign of either satisfaction or dissatisfaction. I also accept the decision of the assembly. I swear that I will uphold and enforce it. There we go. And the assembly has ended. Everyone may leave now. So, let us without further ado leave and we'll see. Oh my goodness, it appears that the kingdom of West CX has declared a war against Northumbria as well. Oh my, as well as the kingdom of Mias. Whoa, okay. Northumbria's having a great deal of difficulty, I do believe. So, Yes, there it is. The assembly is over, and I believe we are going to be doing this. The assembly has decreed a duel to the death to decide whether Reginard is guilty of lying or not. You've decided to take on Reginard in order to punish him for his betrayal and for tarnishing the names of you and the king. Okay. And the only other thing we can do now, I suppose, is also to invade England. Oh my goodness, the assembly has decreed that you join the fleet... The Denmark will send to England in support of Ragnar's sons. As soon as the home gang is over, assuming you are the winner, you must meet Asbjorn in 
the Mead Hall of Reeb. Okay. So, let's see. It appears that we need to wait until the assembly is over, and then they will be coming to take us to the island for the duel. So I'm hopeful that the items I gave to Reginard are not going to be too powerful against me. Because he does have a huge amount of HP, and I'm a little bit worried. I gotta say, I'm a little bit worried. Now, I must just say that I have sold one of the ships that we acquired in the previous episode. And we still have the other little one as well. So, as you can see, we still have this one. Because I wanted to make sure that we had at least a little bit of fleet capacity up here as well. So, that was rather nice, to say the least. And, yeah... I think that was pretty good. So, I think, without further ado, I'm just going to be waiting here for some time once again. Let's ask for some recruits, just in case, as well. Let's wait here for some time. And I'm actually wondering what is going to happen. Aha, here we go. A group of heavily armed men approach you. They are led by Harold, King's right hand, who reminds you of your promise at the assembly. It is the hour of the home gang, and your opponent is already on Short Island. They surround your party and lead you to a nearby beach, where a gaunt old man waits in a small boat. Waits? Yes. You get in the boat and two of Harold's men push it into the water. The old man, without a word to you, begins paddling toward an island on the horizon. The water is gentle. The only sound you hear is that of the oars on the water striking in a slow and deliberate rhythm. The old man is not so old, but wrinkles of a hard life at sea make him look like an elder. He wears a worn and salt-bleached tunic, and the skin of his hands look like hard leather. His eyes are blue and crystal clear and do not look directly at you even for a moment, but remain focused on the island. Up ahead, awaits an opponent who once was a companion. The assembly has decided that two go to Short Island, but only one returns. The boat stops near a small beach, and after you get off, the old man paddles it a few tens of meters back into the ocean, where he stops and waits. Let's do it. Let's go in and duel. Oh my, all I wanted was a farm, a wife and children. I did not want your death, but I do not want to die either. Sorry, Borgar. Sorry to have to kill you. Goodness me, those texts do go quite fast, I must admit. I do need to be a little bit careful about that, don't I? So, let's see, where are we going to be finding him? This is very misty, I have to admit, so I'm hoping you guys can see this. Oh my goodness. Aha, there he is. Hello, Reginard. Now, what are we going to be doing here? Are we actually going to be fighting for real? It appears we are. Okay. Now, do bear in mind, he has about 70 HP. Okay, never mind. He has 0 HP now. But he did have 70, that's for sure. So, I suppose I... Ah, no, never mind. I thought I had to go back to the beach. But, yes, there it is. You have been victorious, but at the cost of killing an old companion. In your mind, you remember the phrase that you heard so often from Reginard. Fate always goes as she must. The old man takes the boat back to where your warriors await in Denmark. When you arrive, they pick up their things and say nothing, aware of the gravity of the moment. Soon they are ready to go. Harold and his men have already left. It's time to look for the assembly judge called Asbjorn in the Mead Hall of Reeb. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? And we have completed it. We didn't actually get anything whatsoever for it. Of course we didn't. We got the ability to be allowed to live, I suppose, and really? Did you see that? Yep. Four Sphere Elite Vikings have escaped. That is terrible. That is really terrible. Okay, well, whatever the case, I think we kind of had to lose a couple of people anyway, just so that we'd be able to use our boat to get across the ocean. And without further ado, I suppose what we should do now is head in to speak to Asbjorn, who is right here. Excellent. Yes. So nice to meet you. I think it's a good time to introduce myself officially, since it is likely that our paths are attached. I am Asbjorn, and I am a Lochnir, a simple doctor who wasted some time in Frankia until I returned to Denmark some months ago. On my way back to Odinsfer, Odinsfer? Maybe. I landed in Reeb and ended up staying here for a few months, serving the local elites, and not so elites. 
I guess my services earned me enough prestige to be summoned as Althing in The Thing held a few days ago. The truth is, I was not interested in coming back to Odin's Fur so soon, for I am still young and have the opportunity to travel to other places and learn more. So the Norns have joined our fate. You need someone who can dress the wounds of your warriors, and I need someone with your fortune that shines above the rest of the men I've known. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, why not? A doctor, eh? Yes, you are welcome. I am sure we will be good friends. We must go to the Port of Reeb as soon as you can and ask the Portmaster to join the fleet. I am glad. I am young and my thirst for knowledge knows no limits. I hope our travels will help increase my experience. It is very interesting how the Norns spin their yarn. Until a few days ago, before the thing, I thought I would return home to Odensfer to end my days remedying wounds and sniffles. Then I met you and I knew that all this would change. Then welcome to our shield wall. Excellent. Okay, so we've actually gained another companion. That's pretty cool, I gotta say. Because we lost one, and now we're gaining one, so that's always good. Now I'm just going to take a look at this guy's stats. He has absolutely terrible gear, I can assume at least, because... I mean, robes? Robes really are not going to... Oh, they actually give a... Yeah, in comparison to that. Does he have 12 strength? Nope. Okay, I was hoping that he would so that I could give him this, but... Yeah, okay. It appears not at the moment. So, what about his skills? Oh my goodness. Okay, that's a little bit strange. I'm not entirely sure why they want to give you two medics so early on, but I suppose it is always good in case one of them gets absolutely massacred. That might be an idea, but yeah. Without further ado, I suppose we'll go into Reeb and see if we can buy some armaments for him. Yeah, maybe that would be an idea. So let's trade with the locals. Should we? Is it even worth it? Because I think we can just fight some Vikings and get better armor anyway. So I think we'll just leave it like that and we will stroll through the town and make our way over to the Portmaster, who is no doubt going to be waiting for us. Okay, we've arrived at the Portmaster's location, and we are now going to be speaking to him. Your ship is of poor quality. You may want to consider buying a better ship from me. Well, maybe. Yeah, I might like to do that in the future if I'm swimming in money. Yes, get it? Swimming? Okay. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yes. No, let's just move on from that. Greetings! I have come to join the fleet of Sven and Harold that will travel to England. He indicates the far side of the bay with his arm. Hi, Borgar. I see you have made a name for yourself in this land. It makes me happy to think that my business with you has helped in this. That should deserve a line or two in any saga about you. The fleet of Sven and Harald is across the bay. It numbers 50 boats, totaling over 800 men. Have you finished your affairs in Denmark? Are you ready to leave? I warrant you won't be back soon. Yeah, why not? I can always come back, right? Yeah, I think I can come back. Well, good luck. Although you can see many boats here, most of the fleet is anchored over in the bay, outside the city. Join them as soon as you feel ready. Oh. Outside the city, at the bay, do I actually have to walk over there? Or can I just do this and just sail from port? No, you can't set sail. You don't have room for one of your men. Of course, Asbjorn joining us right there was definitely the way to go. Okay. One peasant woman is going to get to go back to her home. And we'll sail from port, I suppose. There is the fleet. Aha! Excellent. Okay. So, let's just make sure that we're doing the right thing here. You have successfully completed your mission. Let Asbjorn know. I did that. Didn't I? I did talk to him, and I told him about that. Maybe we should talk to him before we head onward any further. Nope. Okay. It appears there is nothing to speak to him about. So, without further ado, let us interact with the fleet. Finally, after you prepared yourself carefully for the long journey, the fleet rose out of Reeb, leaving Denmark behind to follow the whale route. Join the expedition. Oh my. Are we getting attacked? Or is this going to be a wonderful cinematic shot? Oh my. That's a lot of boats. And we have the smallest one. Well, maybe not. I actually see a couple of small ones. That's actually okay. <laughs> Not too bad. We seem to be doing a relatively good job. 2,000! 2,000 units! Wow, I wish this wasn't lagging. 
Oh my goodness, I really hope that they release an optimization patch for the quick travel system. That would be amazing, because everything else seems to run very smoothly, but yeah, just this is a little bit choppy, which is unfortunate. Maybe if I move the camera in further? I don't think that's going to make any difference, is it? I don't think so. Well, whatever the case, we are going to be making our way over with 2,000 men all the way over to England. And for some reason, King Horik is now wanting us to partake in a feast, which is hilarious. Okay, oh, we have another little bit from the Chronicle here. There was a man called Egbert, or should I say a king? Egbert signing, for he was king of Northumbra, but he was a puppet king, chosen by the Vikings because he was a weak man, whom they could handle. Was this the fate that awaited us also? In Anno Domini 868, the Vikings took... Nottingham. There was fear, much fear, but Westseax and Mias joined forces. Alfred of Westseax, the king's brother, was married to Elswith. Yes, daughter of Ethelred. And of, yes, various places right there, from the royal line of the king of the Mercians. The two realms called the Fjord to war. West CX advanced on Nottingham from the south, and Mias joined them on the way. Maybe they could finally put an end to the advance of the sons of Ragnar. My life was about to change, but I did not know that. Ooh, I'm still wondering who is actually writing this. Is this me? I don't think so, surely. Okay, well, I will look forward to seeing who that actually is. It's potentially going to be a new companion in the future, no doubt, but... Who, in actual fact, it's going to be is a mystery to me still. So let us, without further ado, hopefully make our way over there and get there in good time because I have no idea where we are at the moment and I cannot zoom out because the frame rate is so low, it's not registering any of my inputs, suffice it to say. <laughs> if any of you have played this, then you'll definitely know what I'm talking about, that's for sure. Or maybe I can't actually zoom out. Maybe that's the point. Okay. By now the differences between Sven, protected by Sigurd, and Harald, protected by Horik, are so clear that the fleet progresses divided in two, depending on who supports which commander. But it's not the time for worry. The sea brings wind and the freedom of the waves, and your ship is heading for England, where rivers carry silver and men get fame. And now you're closer than ever to Sven. You just wait for your chance to kill him and rescue your mother. Fate always rewards the patient. Continue to England. Thank you very much. I just can't believe, really, that we defeated Reginald so easily, but I suppose he did have, well, I wouldn't say the greatest gear. If we gave him amazing gear, then we probably would have had a great deal of difficulty. Aha, here we go. The journey from Reeb to Eerfawick, or as the Danish call it, Jorvik, is three days with good weather. But with the slower noise, the trip will take a day or two more. The ships have spread out, but this is usual. When traveling with sail, the winds govern at will. The ships will reunite at their destination. A long trip like this requires a routine. Men take turns in the work of the boat, even at night, because the fleet never stops offshore. The smell of the crowded men is horrible. The water you drink and food you eat taste terrible. And it is always uncomfortable having to peer over the stern when you want to relieve yourself. Eventually, the rift between Harold and Sven becomes open. Each now meets separately with the captains who are faithful to him. Each part of the fleet proceeds separately. Harold has called you and the other captains to his boat for an emergency meeting. Apparently, one of the captains faithful to Sven has changed his allegiance to Harold and brings news. You look forward to the meeting as well. Maybe there is finally news of your mother. Captains, I have sent for you because tomorrow at noon we will reach the coasts of Northumbra. It's time to release the details of the mission and talk about the problems that plague this fleet. Say nothing. In Northumbra, our Danish brothers have become strong and control the kingdom through a puppet king. There are small uprisings of angles, but these are localized and severely repressed. Nothing serious. The latest news we have is that the sons of Ragnar have moved south and taken a place known as Nottingham in Mias, but it seems that the king of Mias has not taken it well. 
He has besieged them there with his army supported by the King of West Seax. We fear that the Ragnarsons may be in a hard place, so our mission is to go to Jorvik and join the forces that are gathering under Rathbath, another of the sons of Ragnar in support of his brothers. From there we will move south to meet the Angles and Saxons. With a little luck we will kill their kings and the road south will be opened for plunder. You will come back rich to your wife and kids this year. I hope so, I have too many mouths to feed, says the ship captain. <laughs> One of the captains laughs loudly. You should have thought of that before having three wives and twenty children. Oh yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, should we really make a joke at this point? Probably not. Okay, so let's see here. Sounds like a good plan, Harold. My men will go in the front. Oh, he looks at you with ill-conceived resentment and disgust. Well, well, we have here an authentic toady. It seems there is always someone who is willing to stoop to any depth to gain favor with the boss. Oh. Really? Oh, I actually meant it sincerely. I was not attempting to curry favor with him at all. Ah, okay, he hates me completely now. Well, yeah, that was not a good idea. Although everything is clear and our goal is near, it seems the problems with Sven don't stop cropping up. This Captain Olaf is now with us and he has very serious news. Go ahead, Olaf. He clears his throat and looks at you one by one. I will not beat around the bush. Sven Borneck is unwilling to share command with Harold. At first opportunity, he will kill Harold and take command. It may occur as we land, though I cannot be sure. Maybe my desertion of his party will change his mind. I am making a guard rotation during the trip. When we land, I will challenge Sven to a duel to the death. Sven is a lunatic, but he's a dangerous lunatic. Sounds good, you have my support. Even if you decide to attack his boat while he is still unprepared. You have my support too, Harold. That man Sven is very dangerous. Yes, he is. Oh my goodness. I think Sven would make a better commander. <laughs> oh no. There we are. That's increased his relation a little bit with us. Oh my goodness. Oh, a woman travels with Sven. One who accepts the spirit of the crow and speaks the words of Odin. Everybody reveres her as she is a woman touched by the gods. Sven has married her in hopes of having a child touched by the gods. But, oh my goodness. If she is your mother, I do not think she remembers you as she has a curse that does not allow her to keep memories overnight. Oh, wow. It looks like your mother now serves Sven. I hope you're prepared to deal with this when things get ugly. I... All around you, the sudden tumultuousness and shouting of men drowns out your answer. A warrior bursts into the meeting. He is hot, and his eyes show panic. <laughs> he is hot, yeah. He's most likely a model. Hello, sir, Harold, sir. Sven Borneck has attacked us. Half the flute is charging us. Thor, help us. Sven has caught us unprepared. Harold remains calm, like a man accustomed to action, and begins to give orders. Captains, return to your ships and lead your crew. Sven will pay dearly for this attack. If we should lose this battle, remember to inform Rathbath Ragnarsson about this betrayal by Sven. Good luck. Now to battle. Oh my goodness, it appears I'm not going to be ending this episode off here anyway then. It appears we have a great, great battle on our hands. And I regret increasing my battle size. Uh, yes. Meet at Jorvik. Oh, does everyone flee from here? Oh, everyone's saying that we should flee. Okay, that would be a good idea. Am I controlling this? Oh, try to flee. I am controlling this ship right now, so let's try to flee, shall we? Let's turn around and go the other way. Okay, we're doing that, right? Yes, we are. Okay, let's go, guys. Don't waste your arrows. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go in the opposite direction. Oh, my. I really did not expect having to flee from a battle. Are, the, are they sure? That they don't need our assistance? It says try to flee. Hmm. I'm a little bit confused, actually, about this. Harold has been knocked unconscious already. Oh, dear. Are we seriously sure about this? I guess so. Oh, my. Wow. Yep, that reminds me. Need to reduce the battle size slightly. 
That would be an idea, wouldn't it? Because otherwise we're going to be seeing a complete slideshow whenever we do these huge naval battles in future. And that would not be a good idea. Not at all. I am attempting to flee. I'm not entirely sure what that entirely means. Because, of course, we just row in the opposite direction of them. And I'm hopeful that that is it. But as you can see, we are getting a little bit further away, but our boat isn't exactly fast. Is this exactly what we're supposed to do? Am I doing the wrong thing right here? Because I can't press tab, so I have no clue, because if I actually started fighting... Ah, there we are. Okay, phew. I was really worried about that, because if I started fighting with 7 FPS, that would be terrible. Behind you fades the battle, the pitiful cries of the wounded, and the clash of swords. You leave behind Harold's army, while Sven's men massacre them. Your mission now is to go to England to find Rathbath Ragnarsson, to tell him what's happened, and how Sven betrayed the king's men. Let us flee. And, oh, we have a, oh yes, a peace agreement here. Oh my, where are we now? I don't actually know. Oh, we're there, there we are. Okay, excellent. So, wait a minute, there's Jorvik, so I suppose we can land just over here. There is the landing point. No? Wait, did it not? Seriously? Oh, okay. I don't think it registered. Okay, there we are. Wonderful. Okay, so before... Oh, my. <laughs> okay, okay. My lord, we want you to know that no one blames you for what happened in the duel, and everyone still fully supports you. Thank you, Brunhild. That's very nice. What happened was inevitable, my friend. It was him or you. I understand the weight you carry on your shoulders, because I just experienced the same after the massacre on the Wodenrick. I know no words can soothe you, but nobody expected Reginald's betrayal. None of this is your fault. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, goodness me, are we going to go full emo on it? Or are we going to go... Oh, okay, we'll go with the sort of standard-ish option. Yeah, there we are, that's pretty nice. Ejil bears his teeth, he seems angry. I do not understand all the tears. Reginald betrayed us. I trusted him. Everybody trusted him. I thought he was a good guy, and what he did was spy for the good and sell us out for a house and a woman. Reginald was a piece of... and deserved his death. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh my goodness, I want you out of my party now. Go back to your father and do not let me see you again, but you have really good armor on right now, so... Yeah, I don't really want to do that. No, he was a desperate man who lost everything. Yeah, he was. He was a desperate man who lost everything. Desperate or not, he is a traitor. It is not worth spending another word on him. Let's go on our way. And I only lost one relation with Ejil right there, so I suppose that was the best option in my opinion. And so, without further ado, I will be ending this episode of here. And next time on Viking Conquest, we are going to be making our way to Jorvik and informing... The king, that Sven has betrayed us all. So, I will see you next time.